Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he chose to join me today as we have a chat with some peeps out here. We're using up the last of the night, it's raining hard, and uh, we're mostly looking for stuff to steal. At least that's my, that's my uh, current predicament, because we don't have a whole lot of money, and I definitely wouldn't have been able to get enough money. That's some wheels right there that Kuno needs. Uh, but uh, I definitely wouldn't have been able to get enough money to uh, pay for the night, so I'm not really sure where that's going to go. Except for the fact that I, I do have a, an inkling, I just don't know if I'm going to go with the same solution that I did in my first playthrough. What do we have over here? A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Huh. Everything is good here, says this person. And these are talking things. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! He gives you a thumbs up. What's so cool? Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer. From out on the bay, a cool wind gathers. It sweeps into the city, tugging at the textiles hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. You're very cool. He makes both hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air. Bang, 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 bang! You feel a twitch in your index fingers. There's a finger shootout a brewing. I'm gonna whip them out. He raises his arms in mock alarm. Don't shoot, officer. Have we got an arrest here or just a shakedown? A shakedown. Good one, officer. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Now what can I do for you? He nods towards his shabby wares. Just kidding, I'm really here to shake you down for some answers to official police questions. Then fire away, officer! I have gained a thought. Finger pistols, 9mm. What? Minus two Safa fair because snapping doesn't help. You were promised a gun, that much is certain. This is why you became a cop. Yet here you are, loitering around with idle hands like some sorry ass loser from the street. Suddenly, you're supposed to be solving cases by, what, like, talking to people? How are they going to believe that you can protect yourself and them from savages without a firearm? This ain't right. You need to think around this problem, and you need to snap your fingers at people as you do. Very funny. I can persuade him to give me some money. It's a white check? Sure. No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. You, I want your money. Now. Oh, okay. Si Lang stops, his face suddenly serious. But why, officer? I don't know. It was just uh, the only thing I could come up with in my head. To ask you, I need to get money somehow. Ah, yes. Money is very important. The street vendor nods, dead serious. Are you trying to ask for a bribe? If so, you're not doing a very good job. He looks at the vendor. Sorry, detective. The man grins as if the entire incident is already forgotten. Yeah, I'll, I'll look around. Thanks. Ooh. Jamais vu. Derealization. Jamais vu. The opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. And I get plus one experience for every orb clicked. An all intellect learning caps raised by one. Oh, that's really awesome. This is indeed the, uh, the thought that Joyce... that I unlocked when Joyce talked to me. That's incredible. I don't think I got that 
I'm pretty sure I didn't get that when I... Uh, Joyce Monsieur is now... I can now do the conceptualization. I must have gotten that when I played the game for the first time, right? Now let's hope that Joyce is still there. I don't know. I'm also thinking, considering the orbs and all, and the way they work, they're checks. You only get the orbs if you pass a check. And that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't hoard experience points and you should actually spend them where you want to spend them. Which is not necessarily something I did very well in my first playthrough. I can't believe, uh, or I don't believe I I did anything wrong with that, outright wrong, but still, I yeah, could have optimized things a little bit better. I'm sure I could have found some, um, some more encounters here and there, depending on exactly where I went. But that said, my point is... I don't know what my point is, but I think I think I need to invest in perception to see things. Perception would be a yellow check. And there are a few yellow checks. Oh, I wonder if I can do this a little bit better now. Probably the map tells me. The wall. This is a conceptualization check. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Guess what? I can actually do that. It is a impossible check of 18, which means that if I want to succeed, I need at least six, and I don't have six. In the dimming light, some things become clearer. We have a plus two because of that, and a plus two because Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. Now, can I actually get some conceptualization from my pants? Not my pants, but my shirt. Instead of the man for Heimdall. 8% is not bad. Why am I looking at this wall again? Yeah. Why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. The lieutenant sighs. Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? We have business to attend to. Kim, you don't even know the kind of trouble you're in with me. Honestly, I fear for you. I don't fear for me, but I fear for you, Kim. <sighs> the world is unkind for your soul, Kim. For your very kind soul. He's, he's going to blossom into a character later on. We're, so far, we, I am only talking from pre-acquired pre knowledge. Hey, Joyce. Did you go into the boat? Nope. You're here. Hi. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I spoke uh, with the lorry men at the roundabout. On the contrary, officer. She smiles. There are yet camioners you have not talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if Wild Pines didn't have eyes on the harbor. I suggest you go back and canvas for more suspects. Yeah, so about that reality thing? More lessons in basic reality? She's positively surprised. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. So our esprit de corps there. Failing. But my conceptualization? Wow. Okay, let me just... I'll be back in a bit. Because I need to put my shirt again on. If you don't mind. So, what is... And I'm going to reach for something fundamental. What is all of this? The scent. The sound. The air. What world is this? What world? The fading pearls of her eyes look to the sea. The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. What do you see? Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. She concludes. There is a term of endearment they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. The DeLorean century. When humanity was high on this world. That almost makes me think of the humanist movement. 
in in real life history. We don't know enough about the DeLorean uh, or Dolores or it's that means a thing in this game. But she's I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna spoil it. But uh, that means that, that it's the moralists. And while she's an ultra liberal, uh, it's still the moralists, and she's she's talking about that. What is it? Elysium. Elysium. The world needs a term of endearment. It does. There are those who would call it hell. I was gonna say, the reason why I chose that line is precisely because it's very easy for privileged people, you know, don't have to have all the privilege in the world, just the privilege of not being hunted for who you are. That's privilege enough. But there's a, there's a tendency for people with privilege to see the world in a much brighter light than people without. That's not to say that people without privilege, or with less privilege, are not capable of seeing the world in a good light. Obviously, there's there's many examples of, of that happening. But it is... I think it is the subtext here in this particular dialogue. Because she immediately pivots to saying that there are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mesk Petro fascists. I don't feel like I got the whole picture yet. Oh, you want a picture of the world? She raises her finger to her lips. There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. Inside, sideways? What shape is this world, then? We used to think it was a sphere, but that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG, Occident Revishore Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three scientific contributors, they're piecing together a dark grey corona. A dark grey corona? Yes. She pauses. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. A cold fear seeps into you. Yeah, Half-Life, don't worry. So I always got the impression that this world is just a fantasy world in well, obviously it is but it's like it's not a this conversation is weird talking about world what is this world and she she's talking about the planet which is not the same thing although it can be understood as the same thing but she is right now talking about the planet she's talking about basically the astrophysics of the setting and i do believe that it isn't a planet right here is probably the i don't remember if later on we're going to find I mean, I don't know as well if later on we're going to find more info on this specifically, but I remember this one most of all, of all the bits that I got to see in my first playthrough. And, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's all mad. It's all weird. The Pale. And what do you mean, Corona? They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly... Imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. She looks around. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together. However naive it may sound. Okay, and then everything will be okay. I don't know about things of that scale. My expertise lies in nations and trade routes. One or several layers below everything. She thinks. But yes, we'll be fine. Don't worry. She does not seem convinced that you'll be fine. If anything, she's realizing how deep your condition runs. Thanks. Okay. You may have misimagined it. 
I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... She looks up. It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco... See, everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world, however wasted its opportunities. The cold seeps into you. The air is heavy with 80% humidity. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. That's our Inland Empire just then talking. Very rarely does it talk, because we're not very good at it. And this is the sort of conversation that it has. I think I maxed it out in my uh, first playthrough. As I said before, it disappointed me. It doesn't really go much further. Shivers is so important. Uh, and there, obviously there's others, but this one, either I missed like the big thing, or it just didn't mark me when it, it appeared, the big thing for Inland Empire. The lieutenant observes you both silently. He adjusts his glasses. You said pale. What is pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. Remember, we have a cadaver to attend to. The lieutenant looks at his watch. Of course, lieutenant. Let's try something else. She bows and then turns to you. I don't want to. I, I want to know what the pale is. I don't think your colleague would appreciate that. He has already been so patient with this whole exercise. Let's continue with something else, all right? She leans against the railing. You can ask about anything else in the world. Anything. You could sneak back later when the lieutenant is not here. Unless you can convince him to step aside. Unless I could. Which I'm not gonna. Kim distrusts me. I have a minus one on that. I wonder where I get that. Where I got that. Although, <laughs> everywhere is the answer. We're not gonna do that. One of the rare occasions where I'm not gonna go for a yellow check. Or a white check, I should say. That's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? Nope. That's all for now. I, uh... I don't want to set Kim too much on edge. I don't know where he's going if I push him too hard either. It's kind of... It's interesting playing games like these because obviously the, the, the devil's in the details for a dialogues like these, but they're so expensive as well. A single check might unlock dialogue trees that you didn't have access to before, so playing it again, there's so much new stuff that it feels like I don't remember at all. And certainly that particular pale conversation, I don't remember having. I was very apprehensive about Kim's opini opinion of me at the beginning when I played the game for the first time, uh, which ultimately didn't necessarily pan out too much, at least not as far as I'm aware. It didn't, uh, it didn't really result in me getting any special results. But I think if I were a little bit more aggressive with Kim, I might have... Oh, don't run. I might have gotten something different. You know, because he might as well just leave me and be like, No, I don't want to deal with you. Go, go screw yourself. Anyway, we are going to talk to Silang, and hopefully we'll have a very nice and long conversation with him well into the night and use... That eight, those eight minutes there. I don't actually know how those that's gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure we can just continue uh, those eight minutes for as long as we're in a dialogue with him, because he probably leaves in eight minutes if uh, we just stick around. Let me look at my map. So I need to talk to Joyce about the pale without Kim. I think Kim also leaves me at a certain time of day or night, I should say. But Joyce leaves me way faster than that. So yeah. Uh, I don't believe these are available. I think these are available. Right? Let's see. Let's see if there's a, if there's a challenging check here for ceiling. Everything's still cool here, officer. The street vendor assures you. Hmm. Was that a rhetoric check? Yes, it was. Where are you from, ceiling? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All revachon. But you're not a local, are you? 
Very sharp officer. I'm Serais from the Sigai province of the Serais Empire. The apricot suzerain tea, you know? Mmm, apricots are delicious. The apricot suzerain tea, the lieutenant explains, is what the Sigai archipelago is commonly known as in Revachol. He pauses. It's a bit of a fraught term, I'm sure you understand. No, no, apricots come from Sigai, the vendor explains. My grandma used to grow them, but Siga is a shithole. That's why I came to Revachol. Here's much better for an independent entrepreneur. Less laws. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur? I send half my profits back to my grandma in Siga. So, Silang, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? For a moment, he's unsure how to respond. I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. He kisses his fingers. Mwah! Tasty, tasty drugs. Yeah, I'm super into drugs. That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale. Or at my home, or on my person. He smiles. Sir, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. That's our perception talking to us. Our perception talks uh, to us in sir terms. And I think our drama also talks in a very, very weird manner as well. But it is a success. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers is a very, very suspicious way of saying it. But I, I, think, I think we're right. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the arbor. They are in this traffic jam. That's even cooler! You investigating that and all, but... Uh, he points to the goods. I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. But you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. So you were embarrassed to tell me? No, I just forgot. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drugs operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. Okay. If you don't know, then I'll tell your employer you've been selling his stuff. No use. He's not telling us. He's too afraid. We need to take him to my station and ask him there. After we've called his boss. Oh, Kim. Oh, boy. I, I'm i playing the bad cop. He's playing the badder cop. I think, well, it's not necessarily bad cop here, but we're, he's he's leaning in on the, on the uh, threat. Okay, look. The vendor looks around and then lowers his voice. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. We're buddies, Silang. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? He whispers. The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her. He shakes his head. She's no lady. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Is the lady driver the old woman back there? I'm going to point to the pale driver. Dazed out? Strange? I don't know. Maybe. If she is... I haven't gone near her. 
I don't get involved. I told you. Okay, we're cool now. All right. He snaps back to his usual self. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detectives. Both of you. You deserve it. Hmm. That sounds lovely. I'll leave you f to it for now. I don't know how it's going to work. Didn't we have a, ch a thing over there? No. I don't know how it's going to work with the time and all that. But uh, let's see what we have here. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. I'm gonna try the shades on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy! The man nods eagerly. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No. The lieutenant gently removes the glasses from your face, setting you free again. You are definitely not buying those. As for our electrochemistry, it lowers our composure, though. Don't tell me what to do, Kim. I like those sunglasses. No, I can't. We can't walk around with you looking like this. His hand has already risen mid-air, but he stops. Okay, fine. Go ahead. If you want to look like a walking midlife crisis, then who am I to interfere? <laughs> That's fine. I'll... Yeah. No, they lower logic. They don't actually lower composure. Sure, sure. It's good. I'll, I'll take those ugly sunglasses. A good starter pair, officer. And when you're ready to upgrade, come back and see me. Let me rummage through the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Siraese plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. These are all first-rate sunglasses, the man declares. Premium design, super material, very cool, UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Actually, be careful with using cheap sunglasses because they are not UV resistant and they will make your eyes actually worse because your eyes will open their, red, uh, their uh, pupils up because, you know, th they will make your make you see darker but the uv will just get in through your pupils because they're dilated because you're seeing darker so cheap sunglasses non-uv resistant sunglasses are really dangerous and you shouldn't get them but uh we're not going to use them in the sun and also we're not going to use our eyes past the end of this game so it doesn't really matter let's leave for now i'm going to do that conceptualization check but i'm going to do it with the best chances that i have and i'm also going to look at my glasses here because these death-tinted shades come with an odd longing for self-destruction. They're ugly. You don't even need a mirror to know this. Describing them is futile. Better get a glass of wine. And I have a plus one for wreck it, Jack, and a minus one for suicidal ideations. And I'm not really sure what ideations is. I am, however, wearing my shirt of conceptualization. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to mess with these things. I'm going to try again, and maybe you can find some interesting sunglasses in the box. No luck. All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor, produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. The street vendor makes a bang-bang sound. Bang, bang! And all for a mere six real! Hey, at least it might actually offer some protection against the sun. Not like those cheap plastic shades. That's true, reaction speed. I'm gonna turn to the lieutenant. Kim, are firefights something we should be prepared for? I hope not. He says, looking up from his browsing. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. Mm, I'll take that amphibian sports visor. Sporty and practical, officer. Good choice. 
Mm-hmm. That's perception. That's what we're here to do. It looks really ugly, though. And it's like, it's it's really, it's bad. It's it's really bad. Uh, we are, we're gonna go with it, though. Amphibian Sports Visor. The malformed green fog on the visor seems to keep an eye on your surroundings. A beady, suspicious eye. The lime-tinted cellophane appears to be poorly molded. The imprint says made in Safre. And we got a plus one perception because beady, suspicious eyes. I mean, that's fair enough. And we're going to put that on. We're going to change our shirt. Uh, you know what? It actually kind of goes with the shoes. I just don't like the mullet. Speaking of mullet, we might be able to change our face in the mirror. Now that we have so much electrochemistry. But I don't think I have a plus anything up there. So we're going to have to try it in the future. But for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.